If we stay cohesive, then we can overcome our economic challenges and continue to grow. We can strengthen our social safety nets. We can shape Singapore together. And this is how we've transformed Singapore over the last half century, solving problems together, growing together, improving our lives. Words fail when you want to describe such an enormous change. So best to see the changes through pictures. I've gathered some, assembled from the archives, from the media, who are very generous, from the ministries and agencies. I also got a few from Media Corp, which ran a then and now contest which lots of Singaporeans participated, and they gave some very nice pictures and stories which I hope to share with you. Let's see what has happened to Singapore over the last five decades. We will start where it all began, with the Singapore River. <laughs> this is what it looked like. Lots of dirt. I'm afraid I can't bring the smell with you, with me, to show you. But my mother's office used to be near the Singapore River, Malacca Street, still there, the street that is. And she used to have a blind telephone operator who came to work by bus every day. And the telephone operator told her that he always knew when to get off the bus <laughs> because he could smell the Singapore River. There were coolies on the Singapore River, slogging away, carrying heavy loads, rubber, copra, rice, from the tongkangs to the go-downs and back, slogging for a better life for themselves, at the same time, the basis of prosperity for Singapore's entrepot. Today, this is all gone. The river has become transformed the skyline has changed. No more tongkangs. We have got electric boats on the water. Boat Key has no more coolies. You go there to enjoy yourself and have a drink vibrantly. This must be early in the evening because everybody still looks sober. <laughs> no. Coolies are also gone, but just to remind ourselves of where we came from, I suggested to STB, and they did, they built some bronze sculptures of the people who used to work there, so we can remember them. Housing has completely changed. Singaporeans used to live in terrible living conditions. This is Chinatown in the 1970s. People were desperately poor, and families often squeezed into miserable little cubicles. This is not a double-decker bed. This is one cubicle below and another cubicle above, another family. <laughs> Mr. Lim Kim San used to tell the story of how he went to visit these cubicles because he was chairman of HDB and he wanted to understand what the conditions were like. And he met a man living in one of these cubicles in Chinatown, and he was seated in a bed covered with a blanket. And he said to the man, there's something the matter with you. Are you sick? It's so hot. Why are you covered with a blanket? And the man says, no, I'm not sick. I'm doing this out of respect for you. Because my friend and I share one pair of trousers, and he has gone to work wearing the trousers. <laughs> So the PAP was quite determined to move people out of slums and to build public housing for all Singaporeans. And one of the first projects it built was Tanjong Paga Duxton Plain, Cantonment Road, to show the voters in Tanjong Paga and in Singapore what the PAP government could do. And these buildings were coming up in 1963 during the elections. This is the opening in 1964. And you can see pictures of MM visiting the houses, just as MPs do now. They were very pleased with those little flats. But it showed people what we could do, and it helped to win Tanjong Paga and the 1963 general election, without which Singapore's history might have become different. Duxton Plain today has changed again. These blocks of flats have gone. Today, we have the pinnacle. 
This is a photograph, not a computer visualization. <laughs> the building will be ready by the end of the year, the tallest and I think the most valuable HDB flats in Singapore. We went ahead to build entire new towns, and among the earliest of our new towns was Tuapayu. Originally, just market gardens, some squatters, some villages. We cleared the vegetable farms and the kampongs. We put up a modern town taking shape, high-rise living. And we moved people into the high-rise flats. And they brought with them the kampong spirit. So if you went to the flats, the doors were open, neighbors knew one another, they shared food, they chit-chatted, sometimes extended families on several floors in the same building. And here you see them, friends with one another, this is good. But sometimes they also brought their kampong chickens upstairs. <laughs> we, HDB and the MPs, work hard to improve the estates, to raise the standards of social behavior. We are still trying. But we have made progress, and with continuous upgrading, Tua Payo now has a vibrant town centre. Tua Payo Central, and with MUP, SERS, IUP, and all the other initials, the new housing blocks look quite good too. So, we've transformed Singapore physically. As the economy prospered, our lives have improved. For the residents of the HDB flats, what's most important is not just what's outside the flat, but what is inside the flat. And the kitchen is the closest to people's hearts. So I, got a, we, I have a very interesting pair of pictures sent in by Mr. Ivan Kang to then and now. And he used to live in a kampong house in Jalan, Jalan Sembawang Kecil. And here you can see him starting to trying to light a fire in the traditional way. I think it must be a charcoal fire or wood. And he's taken a new picture of his current HDB flat in Yishun. <laughs> he looks as trim as ever. <laughs> Toilets tell an even more dramatic story. Used to be like this. This is then and now. This is what's called a jamban. And the lady lived in a place like this till 1985. 50 meters to the house, and inside that, there's a tiny space, a hole in the ground, and a bucket. Minister Jakob tells me the last bucket in Singapore is now in the museum in MEWR. <laughs> to bath, the families will just use an open area. So you see a little girl, and she's sitting in a pail, standing in a pail, and this is what the Cantonese used to call Pei Tan Kong. If you're old enough, that means century year old, century egg jar, which is what it was, came from China, and we used to use this to bath. I used to use this too. Now, contrast this with a standard issue HDB toilet today. The toddler is not included. To build a nation, we not only house the people, but also strengthen the ties with one another. So we built community centers all over Singapore. The early ones were very basic. Just a simple building, zinc roof, and inside you have a ping pong table, a community hall. Maybe you can play carom or checkers. Dam. Star attraction, black and white TV set, with benches outside, whole family, whole kampong gathers because people didn't have TV sets. They came to watch. You don't need a lot of TV sets because at first there was only one channel, so we can all share the same channel. <laughs> now, today's CCs, sometimes you see them, you don't know what they are. I won't ask you, but this is Marine Parade CC. <laughs> and if you go inside the CC, you can see people doing line dancing and wine tasting. There's a wine there and the line dancing there. And many other exciting things. It's quite different. 
Our mosques have changed. Once upon a time, we had surahs, simple primitive structures. Surah is a little prayer house. This one was, picture was provided by Muiz. Muiz told me this was at Jalan Anka. I said, where is Jalan Anka? Muiz said they didn't know. <laughs> so I checked up. Jalan Anka is where there was once a gang fight, and we think that it's somewhere in Granji. But I think it's gone now. Today, with the MBF, we have new modern mosques, and the most pretty one, I think, is the one I visited recently, the Singapore Islamic, Islamic Hub, and the Muhajirin Mosque, newly rebuilt. This is the Muhajirin Mosque. This is Muiz, and behind that, there's Madrasa Irshad. Greatly admired by overseas visitors, not just as places for prayers, but also social centres for the community. So many things happened. This was uh, El Amin Mosque at Bukit Panjang. I visited them last year. They had a Ramatan Al Alamin event, blessings to all day. So children dancing, they were taking, doing blood pressure tests, doing blood donations and so on. Vibrant centres. We've created opportunities for our people. In the past, young people had to find their own ways to amuse themselves. So when it flooded, there was a chance to take a swim. <laughs> this is then and now, and the picture was sent in by Ruhaya, who is the girl on the right-hand side. Today, our young people still swim, but now they train in covered pools, and they excel and win medals. Asian Youth Games this year, we hope similar photograph, YOG next year. Please take note, national team. And I hope many more young people will volunteer to become YOG volunteers next year and show Sing the world what Singaporeans can do. Our youths are already volunteering, fulfilling their ideals, venturing out, helping people all around the region. Here you see them in Chiang Rai, in northern Thailand, building a community hall. They're on the YEP, the Youth Expeditionary Program. So, Singapore has changed. And what has enabled us to make this change and kept us safe and sound all these years is the SAF. We've prospered in peace. We've managed to maintain confidence in Singapore, and we've deterred any potential aggressors. In the old days, we had the SAF, but we depended on the soldiers and what they carried. And the firepower he could carry was a rifle, if you wanted more, you had a machine gun. If you wanted more, the biggest thing you could carry was a 120mm mortar. <laughs> and this is, I used to be in the artillery, so this is, I chose this picture. Today, we have the 3G SAF. And if you see the soldier, which you shouldn't because he's wearing new camouflage uniform, <laughs> he's just one soldier, advanced combat man system and he's linked up, and he should be able to call upon the firepower of the whole of the SAS. He should have a UAV somewhere to see what's happening. He should be able to have an F-15 on call. If not enough, Apache helicopters. If not enough, you have a stealth frigate. Not easy to see because stealth. <laughs> if still not enough, then we will bring our big guns the leopard tanks. And it's not just words, it's a network system all connected together, all integrated, able to fight as one tri-service combined armed force. We've invested in the hardware, but the key is the man or woman, his training, his courage, his commitment. The regulars and the NSmen have served the nation well and we're particularly grateful for the services of generations of NS men who have sacrificed and endured considerable hardships and inconveniences for the country. From time to time, we have a committee to recognize the contributions of operationally ready, ready national servicemen to total defense. Very long name, but it's the Record Committee. And the Record Committee has convened every few years 
and they've had good ideas on how we can recognize and reward NSMEN. For example, they've recommended us to build Safra clubhouses, and we've built a number. The most recent one, this one, is at uh, Mount Faber, and you see the Nationals NSMEN. I chose this picture because behind every NSMEN, there's a wife and children, and they carry maybe more than half the burden of the NSMEN service more than just ironing the uniform, providing him moral support and encouragement to do his duty. Record 5 is chaired by Professor Kutai Ki, has been meeting this year. The committee is completing its work, finally, finalizing its recommendations. It should have some good news to announce soon. So we should look forward to an announcement within a couple of weeks. We are continuing to renew our city, to build our future Singapore. Even in the middle of this recession, we are working hard at it. And again, it's not just the hardware, but also the opportunities, the institutions, the hardware, the memories which we are creating, which is what makes Singapore tick. Let me give you an update of what is happening right now. We are delivering a first-class education system. We've made heavy investments in education at all levels, building new schools, equi equipping them with computers, labs, and so on. I'll just show you two things which schools today have which we never imagined. Media production studios, so that even primary school children can make movies and productions and DVDs. Or indoor sports halls, big enough, roomy enough to play all kinds of activities. Hence, you see all the different colored markings on the ground because all games possible. Beyond the schools, we are investing in our ITEs and polys to provide a first-class post-secondary education. This is ITE College East. It looks like a university. It's as good as a university in many other countries in the world. Or a public polytechnic in Woodlands, set in beautiful, gracious grounds. Here they are doing some adventure training. But even beyond schools, we want Singaporeans to seek out and absorb knowledge because you must keep on learning and relearning. Therefore, we are building modern libraries in our new towns. You may not have seen this one, but this is in Pishan. And this is also a photograph. because it looks so perfect. But inside there are people, and we can see them in a good environment. Somebody is browsing, Wi-Fi presumably, reading, chatting, finding a good spot to absorb information to keep up, of date, up to date with the world. And maybe to chat with their boyfriends and girlfriends. We are making a Singapore which is clean, efficient, reliable, safe a train system which is clean, efficient, reliable, safe. MRTs in Singapore, if you go on them, you can sit on any chair, no chewing gum. <laughs> and it's safe, it's on time. We've opened five Circle Line stations. This is Serangoon Station, just opened in May. But we are building a lot more because the Circle Line will be completed within the next couple of years. These are the existing lines. We are going to have many more within the next few years. And by 2020, we will have even more. Tuas Extension, Thompson Line, Eastern Region Line, North-South Line Extension, doubling the network which we have in Singapore. But you don't have to be underground all the time. We need fresh air, green spaces, parks and gardens all over the island. And that's what environment is doing. And Parks is doing. We have park connectors, or this one, Tuluk Blanga, along the southern ridges. The parks will be green, the waters will be blue. ABC waters, active, beautiful, and clean. This is Kalang River, which used to be the same standard as the Singapore River, but now it's clean with the banks landscaped 
and beautiful. I know this because I walked there the last time I was on leave. I walked all along from Bishan down to Kalang, and it does look like this. But the water itself, I think the public still needs to be a little bit cleaner. Don't drop so much rubbish in. The city centre is becoming vibrant. I show you one of the buildings. This is a real building. It's Orchard Central. Colourful, but the attraction is the road and the activities and the life along the street. Buskers playing, people seeing and being seen, seeing and being seen. All times of day and night. The centerpiece of our city is the new Marina Bay. Last time I told you about it, it was a gleam in our artists' imaginations and impressions. Now we can see a new skyline taking shape. This is the existing buildings, but if you go around the bay, the sail is here, NTUC's U, NTUC building is here with a U. The banking and financial center is taking shape. And if you turn around a bit more, this is what you would have seen, the IRs, already reaching the top and getting joined up. I will show you how the bay will look soon, but rather than show you more, showing you more photographs, let me take you on a sail, buy, and fly around. Starting on the Singapore River. Here we are going down the Singapore River, under Anderson Bridge and the Esplanade Bridge into the bay. You can see the IR and all round, and you fly out the grandstand, the floating platform, flyer, coming out to the Marina Barrage, down here. And next to that, you have the gardens by the bay, including the cool houses, which will be interesting features. Trees, you see the instant trees have all arrived. And up to the top of the IRs, where they have a sky park with a splendid view. I'm getting dizzy looking at this. That's the Art Science Museum. And this is the double helix bridge, which you could have seen from the parade the other day. Along the bridge. And you can take a view. The IRs, you don't have to go in to gamble, you can enjoy yourself outside on the event plaza. They'll have misters to keep you cool, fountains to amuse you, fountains there. Eh? And you go across the bay, and we will have here, between the VFC and the sail, a green lung with a promontory where you can have a party. And some of these things are built. One on the bun is already in Clifford Pier. This is a floating restaurant. This is one Fullerton. The Merlion is still there. The Durians. and you come back to the promenade and you enjoy the sunset. Courtesy of URA. From the Singapore River to Marina Bay, we've totally transformed Singapore over the last half century. 1959 was a moment of great change, but nobody at the Padang in June 1959 imagined the change in today's, to today's Singapore. It was not possible. We will continue to improve our lives, provided we work together and remain a harmonious and a cohesive society, so that in another 50 years, we will have built another Singapore, which is 
equally unimaginable today. The key is to stay united through rain or shine. We just celebrated a special national day, not just at the floating platform, but all over Singapore and in many other places too. And even on the web, where 100,000 Singaporeans left birthday wishes for the nation. Many memorable moments. Take the first national education show last month. They projected a clip of me recounting several rallies ago how it had rained on the 1968 parade. But the participants marched on and we showed the world. They were tempting fate because as soon as they finished showing that clip, it rained on them. <laughs> Poured, but even the rain couldn't dampen their spirit. And the young participants stayed through the show, braved the storm together, and said the pledge sopping wet. The show on 9th of August was impressive. But what was most impressive is not just the performance, but what it takes to put on such a show and what the show says about the sort of nation we are. The imagination and creativity which had to go into conceiving the show. The ability to organize, to execute, to make it happen. Many national servicemen spent a lot of time packing this, bags and volunteers too, and organizing everything. So when you went there, everything was exactly what it was meant to be. The commitment to excellence in all that we do, and the spirit of one people celebrating our nationhood together. All this was epitomized in the pledge moment. Singaporeans from all walks of life, all over the island and overseas too, said the pledge together at 8.22. All united, one voice, saying what it means to be a Singaporean. And as one united people, we can continue to upgrade and build this city and make this place our home, our future, and our Singapore. Good night.